Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about an important topic, which is basically if you look at the stress results of, let's say, static analysis, uh, there are two types of stress that you can see averaged versus unaveraged. And then the difference between them, which is called the structural error, which can also be used as an alternative method to see if the mesh that you have is really a good mesh or not. So uh, for that reason, here I have this uh, simple uh, beam that has a hole in it, so it has a stress concentration as well. And the first thing I do, I create a uh, rough mesh. And uh, here you see the mesh is clearly not an amazing mesh with a bunch of tetrahedrons. Now, it's not necessarily super bad, but clearly I could use a lot more refinement and smaller mesh here. And the fixed support is on this end. I have some force uh, on the top face, and then I go and right-click and say insert, and then stress equivalent. Now, uh, when you look at the one mice as a stress, if you scroll down here under display option, you see it says averaged, right? And you can change it to what? Unaveraged or nodal difference or nodal fraction and so on. So what I want to show you is the difference between these two, averaged and unaveraged. So first I put it on averaged and the other one, and let me rename it. So I call this uh, averaged. Then I make another one. In this one, I go down and change this to unaveraged, and I also name it that way. And then I solve. Okay. So what am I getting here? Let's take a look. So when I calculate the stress, if I have basically several nodes here that are uh, several elements here that are intersecting at one node, right? So here you clearly can see that I have elements one, two, three, four, and these elements are sharing a common node in the middle, right? So I have something here, a node here, and the question is, when I get those nodal displacement and then the stresses, how do I calculate the values at this node? Do I use the results of no element 1, 2, 3, or 4? Right? So what uh, basically ANSYS does by default, it takes the average values of all of these elements and then sets that for the value at the joint node. That is called averaged results. If you do unaveraged, means each one of these elements at their corner, they can have their own value. And there is no common value at the intersection. So what that one does, which is called unaveraged, is that makes, for example, if you look at the stress plots, that makes your results completely discontinuous. And uh, it might look something like this. Of course, this is really like uh, maybe exaggerated, but uh, as you can see, the results here, right, are clearly when you move from, let's say, the right side to left side of this vertical axis, you clearly see these continuities and it jumps from one basically level to another without a continuous uh, basically change or smoothness. While here, if you look, you see clearly you have well-defined contours, right? And the well-defined gradient. So the averaging versus unaveraging. And when is it that the difference between these two is large? By the way, the difference between these two, we call it the structural error that I'm going to show you. So when the structural error is large, or the difference between the average and unaverage is large, that means that the mesh I have is a rough mesh. Because if the mesh was very fine, then the results I would get from these elements would be very close to each other. Why? Because these elements 1, 2, 3 are very close to each other. They are very small. They are uh, encompassing a very small region of the, pot, the part. 
And so the results have to be very close to each other. So whether I take the average of the four and set it here or don't, that should not show such a huge variation. Well, if the mesh is rough, so each one of these elements is basically um, encompassing a big portion of the object, right, a bigger portion, and each one show a different number, quite different number from the others, then of course the average will be different from each individual one, right? So that's one of the tip-offs. If the difference between these two, which is called the structural error for the stress, if that is a large difference, if you see huge differences, that is an indication that your mesh is not fine enough. You have to find, you have to apply a finer mesh. And here, let's go ahead and look at this. So this is the unaveraged and this is the averaged. Okay, and if you look at these areas, specifically if you look closer to the hole, you see the differences, right? And as I said, you can always go ahead and right click and insert and go to stress. And what I want you to add is the error, the structural error. And retrieve this results. And if you look now, you see clearly, as I told you, look in this area, you see that the structural errors are not as small. The other area that you might want to look is this uh, corner here where there is um, force and then there is a, a fixed support, right? Look here, you clearly see the red values are changing here and so in this area also the stress could be what could be quite big now if you look here the maximum uh, uh, amount is like 37 and then the minimum is 0.23 right but it clearly shows you hey not everywhere i need a smaller mesh in these blue areas i'm relatively good but next to this hole and next to this uh, face here or that face maybe I need a finer mesh. So what I can do, as I showed you in the past, I can go and apply what? Some refinement. I say I want a refinement here and I want a refinement next to that, right? And let me regenerate the mesh. So hopefully it gives me a better mesh. And look at the results again. So now it's a little bit smaller, I assume. If not, we're going to go and apply an overall global mesh size. Let's see if it shows any difference, but it wasn't really a major one. So yeah, no, it's, I assume the mesh I had was the, using the same thing. So that was already close to a refine. So I need to reduce the size as well. So here I go to the size and instead of 414 mil, right? I'm gonna go and uh, use a little bit smaller mesh size, maybe 200 right and uh, recreate the mesh and reevaluate the results this time hopefully the results of my uh, stress error structural error is more reasonable but clearly it shows you where your mesh is rough and uh, whether you need to uh, reduce the size of it or not so uh, Guess it's done. And so here we go. You see now? Almost entirely around this hole, the errors are gone, and the errors here are much less. Remember last time it was like 37, 3800, now it's 500. And you can go ahead and uh, further uh, reduce the size over here or do further refinement. But clearly, you see now, mostly all over the object, the results are very close to each other as you can see except for some small things here which are not really major but uh, there is no major difference between them and so you can say my mesh is relatively good so hopefully this video was useful to you i will see you in my next lecture